Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's most talented stars. And we've got one for you today. James Keegan is the man who is holding together the brand new production of Lord of the Dance, which is taking to the stage in its new home at the Playhouse Theatre until January 3rd, 2016. Dangerous Games is the new production and he's the man who is wowing audiences with his remarkable talent. James, how are you doing? Hi Alex, how you doing? Well, I'm all right, but not really so good after researching you. I've been sent the pictures. I'm looking at your career. Let me tell you, James, I'm a deeply unattractive man and very unfit. It must be fabulous to be you. Um, well, I wouldn't say that, but uh, no, I've been quite fortunate of late. Um, had some great opportunities with Lord of the Dance to perform in some some great places and uh, do some great shows. So. Yeah, so it's not bad at the minute, I suppose you could say. I mean, we look at these images of you. You're living the rock star life. I suppose when you see Billy Elliot, it's sort of the opposite of that. I mean, this is a rock concert, isn't it? It is. And, uh, you know, Michael Flatley, the creator of the show, and, and my boss, so to speak, he, he always says, um, you know, rock concerts sell out um, arenas, theatres all over the world. And we're an Irish dance show, and we, we still manage to do that and still manage to get people up on their feet. You know, they're exhausted by the time they leave and clapping their hands and dancing in the aisles. So, um, yeah, we, we definitely, that that's kind of what we'd be uh, aiming for in a way. There's two things that surprise me about you. One is how remarkably talented you are, but two, the discipline you must have. You've never known a life where you can eat McDonald's three times a day and sit in front of the telly and do nothing. I mean, this has been your life, hasn't it? Uh, it has, yeah, but I mean, like anything, you get used to it if... Um, you know, I'm not saying I never um, go out and eat a burger or, you know, and whatever it might be, eat, eat a chocolate bar. You know, you can do things as long as you're disciplined and you make up for it. Um, it doesn't happen often, unfortunately, but, you know, I've just had a week off here, so I've been catching up out with some meals for my family and, and things like that. So uh, you, do, you do have to make sure you're disciplined, but, you know, you, you reap the rewards in the end. And I guess there's no greater compliment than being in the world's most famous dance show. Let's go back to the beginning, though. I mean, as a child there, you were dancing and from a very early age winning competitions. It was an extraordinary childhood. Um, it was, yeah. I started when I was four years old um, soon became involved in the competitions. I got, uh, my mum and dad would bring me all over the country, over to Ireland. Eventually, when I was about eight or nine, over to America. Um, and yeah, I, start, I was really fortunate, to be honest. I was winning major titles um, from an early age and carried that on up, up until I was uh, about 16 when I was lucky enough to be uh, offered a place in the show. So it kind of was a bit of a roller coaster, to be honest. You know, the years flew by and before I knew it, I was, uh, I'd, I'd watched Lord of the Dance in my hometown when I was, must have been about 98. I think I was uh, just roughly nine or 10 years old. And um, remember, remember meeting Michael Flatley at the stage door. You know, he signed my program, and there it was, seven, six or seven years later, and I was, I was up on stage doing it myself. Is Flatley the benchmark for any dancer who wants to be in a show? Is he the guy you look to and go, right? If I can just be a tenth as good as him, I'm going to have made it. Yeah, I think so because he created the show. He was, he took it to a complete different level. And um, you know, nobody thought Irish dancing could be as cool could be as sexy, could be as energetic. Um, it had been very traditional up until that point. So he just he just made it, he turned it into showbiz. So I think, you know, every every person does look to Michael and, you know, see what he, he's done over the years. And then, he, so, he, you know, you, could, you would say he's a benchmark, yeah. Talk to me about the discipline of what you do. You wake up in the morning and you can eat what? You have to go to the gym or is the show a workout in itself? Um, when I'd be home now, I'd do quite a lot of gym work. So we get we get prepared before it's all on a run like we are going to be in the playhouse. Um, it's quite tiring. It's two hours of dancing every night. You know, you're in your tap shoes, you're banging the floor as hard as you can. You're running around the stage. Um, so yeah, it's, it is quite tiring. So we do minimal kind of gym work when we'd be actually uh, during the run. But we'd I'd go to the gym now quite a lot. It's been this morning. Um, obviously, have to eat quite a lot of calories because we burn so many calories when we're dancing. So um, just all the things, I suppose, football player do, tennis player, you know, a normal athlete, just taking lots of lots of food and liquids and, uh, yeah, look after your body. Uh, I notice in your pictures you're very muscled and lean. What's it like being attractive? <laughs> um, God, I don't know about that. I don't, really don't know. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take the compliment, but uh, I don't know. It's um, Yeah, some of, them, some of them pictures, 
Um, there was one up outside the, D- the Dominion where we were last summer, um, so that was quite strange to look with my t- with my shirt off. That was quite strange to look at on the way into work every day. To look back on this when you're eight is going to be sensational, you know, because I look at myself and well, I might be in Shrek, but that's about it, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, to be honest, it was when I first seen the pictures that you kind of looking up there, and it was a, a surreal feeling, you know. It's um, you know amazing in one sense, and in the other sense, it'd be quite. Uh, almost embarrassed not embarrassed but you know like wow that's a big a big picture of me with my shirt off but uh, no like you say something to look back on in years to come and you'll be uh, I'll be pinching myself that it happened I've asked a lot of mega stars this question. I'm going to ask it you today. Why you? Because there are so many people competing for your role to be the lead dancer in this production. Why you? I think like you like you mentioned before. I mean you have to be disciplined. You have to be driven. Um, I've known from from an early age when I seen when I went and watched Michael in the show that I wanted to be in the show, and it wasn't just being the show. I, w- I, w- I wanted that lead part, um, and I think it's the same in any profession. To be honest, it's just it's just about being driven and know what you're wanting and going out and taking it. And uh, you know, I, I have worked hard over the years, but I've been lucky, I've been fortunate, and things have just worked out for me. So I just feel just feel very lucky to be honest. And again, there can't be anything more thrilling than having that ensemble behind you and the band and all that stuff. I guess it is as sexy as it can be in your profession. Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it is definitely the sexiest Irish dancer out there. Um, the most energetic, the most colourful, and that's what Michael's always tried to do with his shows. You know, he's moved with the times. He's used the latest technology out there, the latest costumes. So it, it all comes together and. Uh, like you say, to have all the dancers behind me dancing in the straight line, doing all the exact same footwork, um, it's, it's quite a spectacle. So, you know, pe- people seem to really, really enjoy it, and that's what gets us through it every night. We just we feed off that on the stage. I suppose the risk is because you're pushing yourself so hard, so long, eight times a week, things can go wrong, injuries can occur. I guess that's the thing that you have to be most wary of because if you're out the show, there's nothing you can do, is there? Yeah, well, you know, that's why we take extra precaution. We've got physios on board with us, um, trying to massage. And just like I said before, it's we don't actually... Pe- people think we get more injuries than... Or we should get more injuries than we do. But your ankles and your joints and your legs, they, they become quite used to it every night. You know, used to the same movements every single night. Um, and, and like I said, we do look after ourselves with strengthening and you know, eating the right food and liquid. So we're quite lucky in that sense. Uh, that we don't have we don't be out more often Tell me about this production I mean I've seen Lord of the Dance before this is a new version of it what do we get this year? Uh, well like I just mentioned it's, it's moved with the times you know we've got we've got robot dancers in there now and it's uh, we've got you know the latest um, LED screen up at the back of, of our set we have brand new costumes we've got some new choreography in there and um, the storyline has, has changed slightly it's moved on now it's, it's still all about the spirit's dream um, and you know the good versus evil love story entwined that's still there so there's, there's plenty there's plenty more going on and it's, it's just like I suppose in a sense the old Lord of the Dance but bigger better different storyline um, and even more exciting Help me with how you begin to remember it. I just look at you guys in awe because it's not just every minute you've got to learn something, every 10 seconds you've got to learn something. It's literally every half a second, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, I think that's training from a young child. Um, we would be, we've been learning stuff since we, were, since we were children and different routines and different rhythm patterns. So believe it or not, once, once you get into the show and we're learning all the routines and, and the, the footwork, it does kind of become um, autopilot for us, which is good because then you don't, it sounds crazy, but you don't actually have to think much about what you're doing with your feet, which means then you can concentrate more on the performance and your upper body and interact with the crowd and your arms. Um, so yeah, you, you would probably think that we're thinking every half a second, but uh, strangely enough, we're not. How old are you <laughs> now, James? Other things. I'm just turned 29. What a remarkable life and career. I mean, sensational talent. You're blessed. I guess this is what you were put on this planet to do because you do it so amazingly, so well, and you were chosen to do it. Uh, Yeah, definitely. And and you've uh, said it right there. I I do feel blessed, um, but very fortunate that I've been able to take over uh, Michael Flatley's role. I mean, it's 
such an amazing role. He was such an amazing, is such an amazing guy, and was such an amazing character um, in the role. So it's uh, yeah, it's a difficult one to follow, but um, just loving every minute, and uh, and you know, we'll continue to do so for for many more years. I hope. Oh, if I could just be you for five seconds, what a life it must be. Michael Flatley's Lord of the Dance, Dangerous Games, appears at the Playhouse Theatre until January the 3rd, 2016. You can get tickets by going to Ticketmaster. Of course, you can see James Keegan starring in Lord of the Dance until January. Good to talk to you, mate. Thank you, Alex.